What's going on? You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I'm Mitchell Rands. That's Tom Downey. On today's show, we're going to be power ranking the teams Jamal Adams wants to be traded for from eight, working our way all the way down to number one. So make sure that you're active in the comments. So we know that he's requested a trade. We know that he, you know, is upset with his whole contract extension progress. We've heard a lot of different rumors about Adams. It's not overly surprising with the way this has gone down. Like Adams, Adam was not happy at the trade deadline when the Jets listened to trade offers for him. And we'll tie that into one specific team here in a little bit as well. Now, Adams has laid out eight teams he is open to being traded to. And we'll go alphabetical order, then we'll rank them. The Ravens, the Cowboys, the Houston Texans, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Eagles, the 49ers, the Seahawks, and the Bucks. Some of those teams make more sense than others. Correct. But the Jets do still have some power here. Remember, when Adams requested that trade, the Jets said no. They said, no, we're not going to allow you to go out and shop for, for a, a potential trade here. So there is a chance, Mitch, the Jets just say, you know what, we got four years of control over you, two contract, two tags. We'll call your bluff. I mean, he is one of the best young safeties in the NFL. So if I was the Jets, I would try to figure out how to make him happy. But it's been very, very difficult for them. So will the Jets end up trading Jamal Adams this upcoming season. I want you to type Y for yes, or I want you to go down there and type your N for no. Make sure that you're interactive with us on this entire live show. And if you watch this on a later date, hey, scroll on down. Let us know where you think Jamal Adams is going to play this upcoming season. At number eight, the Kansas City Chiefs. And talk me through each of these teams, Tom. So for the Chiefs, again, all these teams on Adams' list, just so we're clear. He, they definitely fit the common theme of the Adams desire list. He wants to go to a team that's <laughs> going to win football games. The Chiefs, though, I think are the least likely. A, they got this giant Patrick Mahomes contract looming in the future. Yep. Chris Jones is in line for potentially a $20-plus million per year deal. Correct. You've paid Tyron Matthew. You drafted Juan Thornhill. So safety isn't a major. You could always maybe move Thornhill down to corner. But I think with Chris Jones coming up for a massive deal – the Chiefs would probably be better served trying to get that worked out than adding Jones, trying to pay Adams and Jones and Mahomes. You could make it work if you wanted to, but it's just more complicated than other teams on this list. I think if you're the Chiefs, you almost maybe have to pick one. You either do a Chris Jones or do you, you know, pick a Jamal Adams. And as much as I love both of these players, you're looking at two of the best young defensive players in the National Football League. These are the decisions that NFL franchises are faced with. And that's a question that you're going to be faced with right now here on Chat Sports NFL Daily Show. So type CJ for Chris Jones or I want you to type JA for Jamal Adams. I didn't do it. Maybe you get wild with it, though, and do a crazy three-team trade where Adams goes to the Chiefs, Jones goes to the team that actually needs a defensive tackle, and the Jets get picks. Okay, Never down. happens in the NFL. Always down could. for a good three-way. So let us know in the comments section. Let's go to number seven here, the Houston Texans, and it would allow them to come back to Texas. Yeah, which I think is a factor for, for Adams, and they're, they're a pretty good team. I'm sure he wouldn't mind playing with, with Deshaun Watson. The simple problem here <laughs> is what are the Texans going to offer? Remember, the, the alleged report, which definitely came out of Adams' camp, sure. is that the Jets want a first and a third. We'll operate as if that's true for the time being. Well, the Jets can offer the third part. The Texans. The Texans, yeah. The Texans can offer the, the third round pick part. They, I just... You have to get super creative, and it just doesn't seem likely that Houston would actually be able to offer the assets the Jets would require and other teams would offer to pull off a Jamal Adams trade. Plus, to be fair, the Deshaun Watson contract's also going to just pay Laramie Tunsil, too. Yeah, it's going to be a lot, a lot of money for, for Deshaun Watson, but I definitely think he totally, totally yeah. deserves it. So, theme of today's show is trying to predict where Jamal Adams is going to end up playing football in 2020 it is a multi-million dollar question so tom and i we are asking for a little bit of help i'm going to make this the pin comment on today's video so scroll on down there and let us know where he's going to play in 2020. it's time now to go to the city of brotherly love the philadelphia eagles they are aggressive yeah they've proven that repeatedly with some <laughs> rather <we>? impressive <laughs> moves and especially in free agency and they do still need secondary help so from a need perspective this does get checked out they're they're, they're going to try and play Jalen Mills back at safety. They got Will Parks in there and Rodney McLeo. And that's, that's just not great at safety. Jamal Adams comes in and boom, they've overhauled that secondary very quickly with Darius Slay and Jamal Adams. Now, the failing ESPN says the Eagles make so much sense because, look, they got $24.7 million in cap space this year. That's more than any team of the, or of the contenders that Adams wants to be traded to, which is true for this year. 
Then you look at next year, and ooh, that, yeah, negative 50, not a typo. Now, that does not factor in the money that they'll be able to roll over. You'll, that they'll be able to carry over that, that, that 24, 23, whatever it ends up being, million. You can cut Derek Renner. They'll be able to get under the cap. But if you're going to trade for Jamal Adams, then pay him a whole bunch of money, I always say you can make it work for one player if you really want to. It's kind of tough to make it work for Jamal Adams. Sure. And at that point, it becomes a worth discussion. Is this a worthwhile move for the for the Eagles to go ahead and throw all this money at Jamal Adams. If you're looking to stay safe this upcoming season, and I hope everyone is, go to chatsports.com slash NFL face, or dash NFL mask. Um, we are offering the special deal where you can get it for only $14.99. It does ship in two days. You're going to be able to get your favorite team's mask at the link below. It's also in the description. You can see it down there, NFL solo face mask. Ship out within two business days for $14.99. If you have to wear it to NFL games, please do it. If you got to wear it to the grocery store, please do it. It's at chatsports.com slash NFL mask. San Francisco 49ers, they're next up here on our list, Tom, at number five of uh, destinations here for Adams. The, the, the key part here for San Francisco is that, A, they've paid Jimmy Ward, so he's locked in at free safety. Strong safety, we'll see what ends up happening, you know. Jaquaski Tart is in the last or is, is in the last year of his deal. They could move him possibly as part of a trade somewhere else. I know they've invested in some safeties in the draft, guys like Marcel Harris and, or Harris and, and Tavares Moore. I think if you can get Jamal Adams, though, especially if you're trying to go all in in this window that you have right now, it does make some sense. The tricky part, though, for San Francisco is that although they do have some of the best cap guys in the NFL, yep. they are able to manipulate the cap like very few teams are able. At some point, that bill does come due, or at least a portion of it. You're also having to pay George Kittle coming up. Yes. And much like Adams is upset for the way things have gone down, you do have to at least worry a little bit about the Niners paying Adams and trading for Adams and not paying, paying Kittle. Kittle. That could be an issue. So for this one, I put together a trade. Now remember, first and a third is the alleged offer or the alleged ask from the Jets, but we'll mix it up for most of these. So I got Tart going to New York, and he can play some linebacker if you need him to, add another safety. Maybe the Jets want to gamble on Dante Pettis. And then, of course, a 2021 first-round pick. I don't see any scenario, despite what some Niners media members might tell you, in which San Francisco could acquire Jamal Adams without giving up a first-round pick. It's going to be an early first-round pick. Well, no way. Who says – Or late first-round pick, excuse me. Who says no to this deal here? What I want you to do is let us know. Type J for Jets or type 4 for 49ers. I think it's an interesting option for San Francisco. I, I would wonder if the, if it's not enough from a Tart and Pettis perspective in addition to that first-round pick. It does require the Jets to value adding another safety. If it does, I think it, it works for San Francisco if, of course, they can make it work between paying Adams and Kittle and everyone else out there. All right, Giants fans, you guys have done it. You have also hit the 100-sub mark as part of our channel challenge. Browns, Cardinals, Dolphins, you guys already got your videos. Now it is the Giants' turn. So if you haven't already and you're a Giants fan, head over to chatsports.com slash Giants TV to subscribe and use hashtag Giants to get your questions on the show. Any Giants or the questions that you guys have, throw them in the, in the comments section of this video. And as promised, you will, we will put together a Giants-only mailbag for you guys with a chance for more videos if you guys show up. At number four here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So originally, Adam Schefter put out seven teams, and Jamal Adams said, wait a minute, I want to add another team to that list, and that was the Buccaneers. Look, that, that would allow Adams to reunite with Todd Bowles, his former Jets head coach, now the Buccaneers defensive coordinator. Again, from a longer-term perspective, it is a little bit tricky from a cap perspective. They could make it work. But if you're all in with Tom Brady, sure. you're, and especially with, with, with an older NFL head coach, you're probably a little bit more, more committed to adding players now and going all in and maybe you move Antoine Winfield to safety, replace Justin Evans, Jordan Whitehead. Okay, he's played a little bit. They've invested a decent amount draft pick-wise at the safety position. But if you can get Jamal Adams, who we know for a fact fits that, that Bucks defense, not that he wouldn't fit many defenses. Yeah. 
I think you go all in and, and you attempt to do it. Yeah, that's kind of what the Buccaneers have done. I mean, maybe that's the piece that they need to really take themselves over because as much as I like the Brady move, as much as I like a lot of the moves the Buccaneers made. Offer that first and a third. See what they're they say. They're still not quite, in my opinion, up to the New Orleans Saints. Maybe going out and get Jamal Adams takes you a little bit over the hump. Seattle Seahawks here for Jamal Adams trade destinations at number three. Former Legion of Boom could definitely use and a boost. not really the Legion of Boom anymore. Uh, <laughs> they kind of lost all of, all of the key players. They're kind of trying to rebuild. Now, the addition of, of, of uh, Diggs in, in at that brilliant trade deadline move with the Lions was a huge boost to them. Bradley McDougal, yep. eh, that doesn't really move the needle. You still are going to have concerns uh, about the, the nickel corner spot. Maybe this would allow the Seahawks to use more big nickel as opposed to that base three linebacker set if you bring in Jamal Adams. It makes sense from a need perspective for Seattle. They can make it work from a cap perspective as well. My biggest actual concern for the Seahawks perspective is would they be better served spending that money on a lesser player, no doubt, yep. but at a bigger position of need on the defensive line? So here's the Tom uh, trade idea that he mm -hmm. threw together for Jamal Adams going to the Legion of Boom. And then the New York Jets, they receive the, I guess, projected asking price of a first the and a first third round. Pick. The only time I'm going to use it on this one, just because, well, I had to include it at least one point here. And I didn't really love some of the players the Seahawks would try to include there. They're, they're too thin at corner, a big need for the Jets. And what are they going to do? I'll offer Brandon Shell back to them for the offensive line. So if indeed that asking price is a first and a third, I think Seattle should at least have interest because you're not going to get a player of that caliber, especially with the way the Seahawks have drafted in recent years when it comes to round one. So if they want to make it work from a money perspective, I say Seattle should go all in for it. All right, so Tom saying they should go all in, but we want to hear from you. So who says no? Type one for the New York Jets or type two for the Seattle Seahawks. So how about this? you got to pick a player here, right? Because if you're Seattle, you either maybe bring in a top free agent, and Jadavion Clowney, type 90, or Jamal Adams, type 33. As much as I think Jamal Adams is a superior player, Clowney might actually fill a bigger need. However, you, both players you, want you a go, lot of money. You, you, it's, it's, it would be similar money in theory. But now, I'm maybe probably going to pick Clowney. Maybe you get Clowney for less. And, and yes. for that, let's pretend that you can get Clowney for less. I'll still take Jamal Adams. He had more sacks than Clowney did last year. <laughs> now, I'm breaking my own rule by, by using sacks as a way to evaluate pass rush ability, but Adams is more than just a box safety. If the money's similar, I'm going to take the better player in this case and ignore the need in the end. But see, then you still got to go trade players. You don't have to trade anyone for Jadavian Clowney. That's true. So 90 That's true. for Clowney, type 33 for Jamal Adams. Now, remember, we are stronger together, and if you're a Seahawks fan, you guys are going to be stronger together. That's why they call you the 12s. And if you want one of these t-shirts, we have them for all 32 NFL teams. All you got to do is go to the link that you see below on the screen, or it's easier, honestly, if you just click the link that's in the comments and in the description. It's chatsports.com slash strong. So these t-shirts are up to 30% off, and if you're watching this on live, it's a limited time offer. If you watch this on a later date, I don't know if the offer will still be there. Another reason why to watch our live shows. So proceeds, though, they all go to the COVID-19 relief fund. That's a really awesome deal. Chatsports.com slash strong. I actually just bought one for me the other day yeah, for my shirts. team. Very comfortable, and it's like the high-quality shirt. It's not like the gross stuff that you don't want to oh, wear in yeah. the summertime. So high-quality shirts here at Chatsports. Baltimore Ravens at number two. Let's get into the top two, Tom. These are This is where it gets fun. The common theme here is that these are the two teams we know for a fact called and had interest at the trade deadline. I think still would. Now, the Ravens did of course, pay a bunch of money to Earl Thomas. And, of course, they did extend Chuck Clark as well. Yep. They were very creative with the ways they used him last year, so they could still do that. Find me a better secondary in the NFL than Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, Chuck Clark as your number three safety, Earl Thomas, Jamal Adams, Jimmy Smith is, ends up being your cornerback four, and you got two fourth-round picks a, a, on depth there as well, Anthony Averett and Amon Marshall. Maybe with fully healthy the L.A. Chargers. I feel like I'm actually going to go with the Rams there in the end. Now, the biggest problem here for the Ravens is a long-term money issue because Lamar Jackson's going to get the bag. Ronnie Stanley might end up beating Laramie Tunsil's contract. Marlon Humphrey, he's going to want to get paid. Now, you can find a way to do it. It is going to be tricky. You're going to be able to roll over salary cap. That will help. 
They did, of course, add Clayus Campbell, as all that factors in, in, into the contract side. The, I guess, somewhat creative way I found of, of, of making this work for the Ravens, in terms of a, especially from a money perspective, is I sent the Jets not a first-round pick. Okay. Instead, a 2021 second, and I sent Matthew Judon. So I, I, I broke okay. my own rule of starting with a first-round pick, but the Jets desperately need pass rush help. Matthew Judon is a very, very good pass rusher, but he's expensive right now. So you could add Adams and not end up paying that much more. I mean, the Ravens also have some pretty solid depth behind them. Who's the Louisiana Tech guy with 45 Jalen sacks? Ferguson. Jalen Ferguson, who I think could have actually a pretty good uh, step up I'd year. be worried about it, but sure. you, you have options there. But if there's a team that I'm confident in that could make a solid linebacker, mm -hmm. it's the Baltimore Ravens. So you're getting the theme of today's show. Who says no? Type NY for the Jets, or we want you to scroll on down and type BAL for the Baltimore Ravens. Still might Ravens. be the Jets, but I wanted to be different. I like it, Tom. We're being different. At number one, maybe not much of a surprise here, it's the Dallas Cowboys. This is a team Adams is like, yeah, I'd love to go play for them. And I'll get to this point at the very beginning because it's important. I think it's been overlooked here. The Jets are upset with the Cowboys. Yep. The Jets blame the Cowboys for Jamal Adams wanting out. Because it is not a coincidence back at the NFL trade deadline when Adams, when it got leaked that Adams was on, on the trade block and the Jets were listening to offers, that all of the trade details came out about the Cowboys from Cowboys media. The Cowboys are the one who let that out. Absolutely. It's their fault. And the Jets are not appreciative of that. From an on-field perspective, the Cowboys make the most sense of any NFL team. Xavier Woods, haha, -ha, Clinton Dix, they're not Jamal Adams. They're startable, yep. but they're not Adams. They're also in the, in the last year of their contract. Now, the other key part for the Cowboys here is that you got Dak Prescott coming up. And in all reality, as, as, as oxymoronic as this might sound, it's actually accurate. The only way to afford Jamal Adams is to also pay Dak Prescott. Because by paying Dak Prescott, getting him off of the franchise tag, you actually reduce his cap hit for this year and probably next year, if not year three as well. So you'd save money that way. You free up money to afford Jamal Adams. With two years left on his deal, wouldn't be that expensive of an offer. I do think the price for the Cowboys might end up being higher than any other team out there. So here's my offer. Again, keeping in mind the first and the third. 2021 first round pick, of course, because it'll probably be late. Yep. A fourth round pick, so a little bit lower than that third. And I'll throw in Cheetah Bayouze, who in all likelihood would probably be the Jets' number one cornerback just like that. Yeah, you're probably not wrong. It's so. a lot, but I'm, I'm trying to remember that the Jets probably don't want to trade with the Cowboys at all. Yeah, they're probably a little bit upset right now, and I don't really actually blame them. So, Tom, I do want to tip my cap to you and say great job coming up with different trade scenarios for all those different teams. But who says no? Type NYJ for the New York Jets. Or type DAL for the Dallas Cowboys. Tom, what says you? Uh, I, I am not convinced the Jets are going to end up making a deal with the Cowboys. 